the best preparation for tomorrow is to do your best today so hello my shimmering stars today i shorya grover welcome you all to this amazing platform of pw english yes my dear students today we are going to start with our topic crystal field theory so as you all know that exams are approaching and all of students are tense that how we have to cover the syllabus or what are the most important topics with respect to examination so today i am here and i have brought up a very important topic with respect to your examination that is crystal field theory so we shall be covering it in few minutes let us start with it now students if i talk about uh, the crystal field theory topic it has some key points now what are that key points basically it explains us that according to this theory there is a electrostatic force of attraction between the central metal atom and the ligand right so we shall be writing all of these key points along with it according to this theory according to this theory there is strong electrostatic force of attraction between central metal atom and ligand now what happens students as i have told that there is a electrostatic force of attraction that means i shall be talking about the positive and the negative charges so when i talk about the central metal atom or about the ligand the central metal atom act as a positively charged species or if i talk about the ligand it behaves as a negatively charged species now ligand basically act as a point charge or a point dipole when i am considering the central metal atom i shall be taking ligand as point dipole when i am talking about ion i am considering that my central atom is a ion then i shall be saying that the ligand is a point charge right so these are the very few basic things that we need to know regarding the crystal field theory now what is the next important key point with respect to this theory that there is no overlapping between the metal atom and the ligand this is a very important key point that there is no overlapping between metal and ligand now the most important key point that we shall know over here that the all the orbitals in you know when i am talking about the d subshell all the orbitals over there have basically the same energy if i talk about dxy dyz d uh, xz dx square y square and dz square all of them are degenerate orbitals what i am saying a word i am saying a word degenerate orbitals all d orbitals are degenerate what do you refer to as a word degenerate that means they have same energy same energy now which are these these are basically dxy dyz dzx we have dx square y square and we have dz square if i classify them uh, on the basis of two sub categories one are the axial ones another one are the non axial ones now what are the axial ones axial ones are the ones on which the lobes are present on the axis while non axial ones are the ones in which lobes are present in between the axis kindly understand this very basic concept if i talk about dx square y square and dz square the these both are the axial ones that means the lobes of both of them lie on the axis and if i talk about dx y d y z or dz x they are basically the non axial ones that means over here the lobes of them uh, basically are seen in between the axis right all of these have same energy now what happen basically as i have told that there is a electrostatic uh, force of attraction between the central metal atom and the ligand so now what shall be occurring over here you should know that ligands basically contain lone pair of electrons and central metal atom basically has the uh, d orbital in which electrons are present so there shall be a repulsion between both of them 
what i am saying is that the electrons that are present in the d orbital of the central metal atom and the lone pair of the ligands they repel each other and due to that the energy of the orbital increases okay now the degeneracy can remain same and also the degeneracy can break again i am repeating the word degeneracy is referred to as the same energy level right so what i have told over here this is the important key point which leads to the octahedral and the tetrahedral complexes so as i have told that what happens there is <clears throat> there is repulsion between there is repulsion between whom between the electrons of d orbital of metal and and the electrons the lone pair and the lone pair electrons on ligand due to which due to which energy of orbitals increases now one most important thing that you need to remember if the ligand is arising in a symmetrical manner then we can say that the degeneracy doesn't breaks down but as yes, the energy level increases but if the ligand approaches in such a way that it is coming from axial or it is coming from non axial position then yes the degeneracy shall break down and the orbitals shall have different energy which is referred to as crystal field splitting now what is crystal field splitting when the energy of the d orbital splits down into higher energy level or i would say the uh, the lower energy that they have are crystal field splitting i shall be showing you with the help of an example now see i told you that here we have so uh, okay uh, before this before this i let me tell you when the degeneracy breaks down we shall be seeing the three cases octahedral tetrahedral and square planar so we shall start with the octahedral case over here with the help of octahedral case <clears throat> now see what happens in octahedral first of all i shall be explaining you the diagram but before that let us understand with the help of octahedral tetrahedral in cases okay so if i talk about the octahedral case what happens in octahedral case let us say this is your central metal atom and yes the uh, basically here how are how it is forming a octahedral geometry it is forming octahedral geometry in such a way right so this is our octahedral geometry now what happens as i've told you that ligands over here shall approach in either axial manner or in the non axial manner now you should remember this thing that when i'm talking about the octahedral one when i'm talking about who when i'm talking about octahedral one so here from the axial position all the ligands approach towards the central metal atom now what shall happen in this particular case if i talk about the axial one that means it is dx square y square and dz square they were the axial ones now ligands when approaching through the dx square y square and dz square that means they were present on the axis now which were present on the axis axis may be x axis or y axis when i uh, see over here which are present on the axis this is present on the axis this is present on the axis this is present on the axis and this is present on the axis now what will happen that means if the ligand is approaching from the axial position and it is showing a repulsion from there that position then what shall happen their energy will automatically increase now the energy of axial ones will increase what will be the energy level diagram for them just look at over here very carefully see this is the uh, d orbitals these are the five ones now what will happen as i told you as i have told you their energy level shall increase because ligands are approaching towards the central metal atom now when ligands are approaching towards the central metal atom there shall be repulsion and the energy level shall increase now yes their energy level is now increase like this now as i have told you whose energy level increase more axial one or the non axial ones now consider that the ligands were approaching energy level increased now as they are moving very close to uh, close to the central metal atom the axial ones energy will have been more because the ligands are approaching from the axial position so what shall happen now axial ones are dx square y square and dz square this shall look like this and the non axial ones which are the non axial ones these are the non axial ones if you want to write over here it is dx square y square and this is dz square and if you want to write over here this is dxy 
dyz and dzx respectively so what happens over here see this is basically the average of both of them or i shall say that this is basically the level at which the energy increases after repulsion so what happens over here this level this basically has more energy level in comparison to this one understand this concept very carefully that these both have more energy in comparison to this one because the ligands are approaching from the axial position now you shall understand this that this is basically the zero level and this gap between them is referred to as delta o now what is delta not or delta o it is basically the crystal field energy splitting in the case of octahedral complexes is it clear to you okay now students this is very most important because questions are generally asked from this kind of structure Great. I want you all to write it down so that we can move on to the crystal field splitting energy levels also and the diagram also. Kindly write it down very fast. <coughs> okay. Now one more thing over here that you need to mention that this gap basically is minus 0.4 delta naught and this gap basically is positive of 0.6 delta naught. This will help you in order to find the crystal field splitting energy value. Is it clear to you? Now see, what kind of questions are generally asked from this concept? They will say you that kindly fill the electrons, kindly fill D4 electrons. How will you fill that? Just understand that there are two kinds of ligands. One is strong fill ligand. One is strong field ligand. And another one is weak field. Strong field are the ones which have the delta uh, not value in which we are talking about the delta not value. Their value is more than the pairing energy value. That means over here pairing will occur. Over here pairing will occur. Do remember, whensoever you are talking about a strong field ligand, you shall be doing the pairing. And when you are talking about the weak field ligand, there is no pairing. Now, let me show you the filling of electrons over here. How shall we fill the electrons in all these values? First of all, this is referred to as EG, this is referred to as T2G. One more thing, okay? Now see, how we will fill the electrons? If I have to fill D1, I have to fill one electron in the D orbital. What will be my diagram? This was my initial diagram over here that we have only one electron. After that, I know that due to repulsion, the energy level increased and it split into the two categories. One is the EG1. And another one is the T2G1. While filling electrons, do remember students, you have to fill from the lower energy level. You shall be filling from the lower energy level, then you shall be moving to the next one. If you have to fill the one electron again, you will fill the very first electron over here. Okay? If I have to do here, let us say it is D2. How you will fill? It will be two electrons. It shall be two electrons. Second electron will come over here. Now, if you have to fill three electrons, three electrons. Now comes the next case that you need to understand. Till, till D3, it is same. Till D3, it is same. But at D4, the situation changes. Now, you will see the strong field ligand or the weak field ligand. If it is a strong field ligand, then pairing will occur. Then the fourth electron will shall come over here. But if it is a weak field ligand, then the fourth electron will go over here. Let me show you this diagram also. If I am talking about D4 and if I am talking about the strong field ligand and I am talking about the weak field ligand. For the strong field ligand, what shall occur? Like this, these are my orbitals. Okay. They will split into EG1 and the T2G1. Okay. I'm just making for your reference. Now over here, I have to make four electrons. One, two, three. If it is a strong field one, pairing will occur. Four. Now do remember, it is just for your example sake, there is a large difference between both of them. Between the EG and T2G. That's why pairing is occurring. But in the case of weak field ligand, what shall happen over here? In weak field, 1, 2, 3 and 4th electro electron will go to the EG level. There is no pairing. In strong field, pairing shall occur but in weak field, there is no pairing. So, these are the very uh, questions that are generally asked over here, right? Now, I shall be talking about the next one that is the tetrahedral one. Let us talk about the tetrahedral one. In tetrahedral one, it is very simple. In octahedral one, the ligands were approaching from the axial position. But over here, they shall be approaching from the non-axial positions. Now, who will have more energy? Obviously, the non-axial ones. So, how shall it look like? 
these are the 5d orbitals they will have more energy due to repulsion in between them and now the these three p2 will have more energy do remember in tetrahedral we won't write g with t2 this is e now this is t2 and it is e we shall not write e over here and this difference is basically the delta t right and one more thing here there is no such thing that pairing shall occur or non pairing shall occur here here always no pairing here always no pairing why no pairing because its value is you know less than the pairing energy value so here there is no pairing always whether you are taking strong field or you are taking weak field it doesn't matters because here the number of ligands are less here there are four ligands because it is a tetrahedral case so here shall be no pairing but in the case of octahedral you should remember this basic thing that when you are using the strong field ligand pairing will occur when you are using the weak field ligand no pairing shall occur is it clear to you so students this was all about the crystal field theory that that we have covered in this particular session i hope so that you will be able to solve all the questions with respect to the crystal field splitting um, diagram as well as how you have to fill the electrons in them so thank you so much and have a good day and all the best for your examination